Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Awaken the Wonder. I'm on location here in North Carolina, and I'm excited to interview my dear friend, Mark Brown. So Mark, welcome to the program, man. Thank you, Caleb. Um, now we met a few years back, uh, had a really good uh, friendship through there, and it's been developing over the years. Um, but you, uh, you, are, you are a man of God, you're a man of character, you've been a business owner, you've been a missionary, you have all types of things in the background, but I want to focus on a, a couple of different spots uh, in your journey, one of them being that you were actually a missionary in Mongolia. Yes. So that's a pretty cool story. Most people have never met anybody that have been a missionary in Mongolia. How, tell me a little bit about that journey there. That was uh, quite uh, an experience. Uh, we actually lived in Ulaanbaatar, which is the capital of, of outer Mongolia, uh, from, gosh, I'm trying to remember years now, 2006 to 2009 ish. Um, it, it was uh, a call that God had on our life to, to go there. And when God calls you and, and you, are, you step into obedience, God will just do amazing things. Uh, we, we, uh, we didn't realize it at the time. Well, I guess we kind of did, but we, we have an adopted son who is from Mongolia. Our youngest child is okay. Mongolian. Wow. Uh, which, which was something that was... Nancy will tell you about that at another time, but that yeah. was it was quite an experience, you know, how that worked out. But then once we got there, God just opened up incredible doors. We um, we really did things the wrong way, things you're not supposed to. We knew we were called. We just went uh, because we had sold our business after 20 years, and we knew we were called there, and and we could we're in a position that we could support ourselves. We didn't have to count on indiv individuals or churches to, to stand behind us. Yeah. We did have churches behind us, but we, we went just kind of rogue. Right. And Which, in ministry, that gives you freedom to minister wherever God leads you. You don't have to Definitely. answer to somebody at home or, or things like that. So it was, it was quite amazing to to just show up there with, with four small kids and no place to live and, and stay in a guest house for a month. Until Most you could, people would never do that. Uh, you know, when you, when you do it, it, it just seems normal at the moment. But when you look back on it years later, you think, how crazy was I? What, what, you know? I'm curious. This might be a good question. Many people, they have a lot of kids, and so they don't take that step because, oh, someday when I don't have the kids around or someday... But you did it with the kids. What, what was that like for well, you? Because there's many that want to follow the call of God, but they put it off for that reason. We, we, uh, we actually did it with just our four youngest kids. Our five older kids had already been in college and were uh, on their own pretty much at that point in time. So we, we kind of had a, you know, it was God's perfect timing. We had a, a, a six-year gap in the age of the children so that we could go before any of the younger ones started high school. Wow, and you've 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 adopted uh, five five kids. We have we have five adopted boys. Why is that so important to be able to adopt and to take care of people? Well, there's you know we're kids? scripturally we're supposed to be doing that. We're, you know that's our call as as Christians to to take care of the orphan, the foreigner in the land, and the widows and the priest and the Levites. I mean that's it's it's scriptural. So we we've tried to walk that out in our lives, and one of the ways that we've done that is is through adoption. And we're big fans of adoption, both internationally and, and domestically we've adopted. So it, it's just, uh, it's an important part of the kingdom that often, I mean, you, you uh, a lot of times you get me on a wrong tangent here, but you you, uh, <laughs> you see folks that stand up and they're, they protest abortion, but, you know, and, and we should, we should be, you know, that that's, every life is important and, and God says he knows us in the womb. So it, it's important that, that we do our, our thing to, to try and stop abortion. But, you know, it's one thing to say and it's another thing to, to take that step of action. And we felt called to do it in, in the way that we did by, through adoption. Wow, that's powerful. But the, the thing uh, that we learned, we, we also have uh, three of our boys are adopted from Korea and one from Pennsylvania and, and one from Mongolia. That, that's of our adopted sons. We also have a natural son. But the point is that, that through the, the experience in, in those different cultures, you learn that the, the Koreans, that the culture gives up children in a different way than, than the Mongolians per se. And the Mongolians, what they do is, is they don't actually give their children up for adoption. They have this process whereby if for some reason a family can't take care of a child, they don't give that child up for adoption they will 
find a family that will take care of the, the child and then they will adopt the family. Wow. So they're not giving the child up, her, but you become part of that family. Wow. That's and brilliant. there's a ceremony that they do uh, where you pass the mayor's milk and you, you have to drink the mayor's milk and, and there's a ceremony that they do, which we didn't completely understand because it was done in Mongolian at that time. Um, and, and when that happens, you bec we become Mongolian. Wow. So through that process, then years later we go back and, and we're missionaries there and, and ministering. And when we would be in a, in a church setting, say, um, and, and we would explain that, that we are Mongolian, they would, for, at first folks would look at us, but then when we explain we have an adopted child, they immediately understand that you are Mongolian wow. and they listen to your words much more intently because of, of that immediate connection. You're one of them. Yeah, you're, that's you're, you're, you're not a foreigner speaking to them at that point. You are one of them. And, and it just opened up some incredible doors and, and it was a, a really special time that we were there. there there's times in, in our lives, I think, that we are in a really sweet spot with God, and and we were. I mean, it's not like everything was perfect. I mean, there's you know you you get too busy, and there's family issues, there's financial issues, and things happen, yeah. health issues, everything. You know, the whole gambit. But if you're if you're walking with the Lord and stepping out in, in that kind of obedience, He's going to be obedient wow. and to walk with you and 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 just open incredible doors. And so he, it was, he it was loves a special people. time. God loves people, man. He loves them. Right here where we are in the United States, he loves them in Mongolia. He loves them in all the continents. He has a heart to, 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 that nobody would perish. It's beautiful. It, it, it is. And, and my wife, Nancy, can tell you this a little more directly maybe when, when you get her interview. Uh, she just, uh, we, one of the things that happened, one of the doors that opened right after we got there, um, they, there was a... Um, the university we were working at had someone come to them from the public uh, television station and wanted to interview a foreigner in, the, in Mongolia. And no one else wanted to do it, so they sent us. And, and of course, we went with the whole family, and, and our son is there, and, and you know, went through the whole process, and, and they, they recorded it, and we don't even know what they're saying because they dub it over in Mongolian, and, and it's just kind of an interesting day. But Nancy is just so bold, you know, in, in the interview, on the, on, and this is on the national education station that is doing this interview, and they ask why we're there. And Nancy just looks them straight in the eye and straight into the camera and says, we are here because God loves the Mongolian people, and he wants them to know that he sent his son to die for them. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, it just kind of changed the whole atmosphere. And, and, you know, through that interview, because it gets played, they don't have much funding, so it gets played over and over again. We would be in, in um, restaurants or cafes, and people would come up and hand us notes because of that interview. That, wow. That, you know, even though we, we landed in a country of three million people and we knew two people when we arrived, by the time we left, we couldn't have coffee in a cafe without being... Uh, recognized so so god will, will just be faithful in every area wow now you've also ministered in africa Tell yes. me about your journey there you've, you had quite the trip yeah last year was 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 quite an uh, an experience we at the beginning of the year uh, actually i think june we were in kenya for for two weeks and then we had i had another opportunity to go back to uganda in september and uganda was just one of the best short-term missions trips I've, I think I've ever been blessed to be part of. We, um, I was supposed to go with a group of folks with my pastor from our church and another gentleman from Columbia. And just through logistical things at the last minute, everybody wind up, that was going on the trip wound up canceling. And, and God has such a sweet sense of humor. <laughs> what had happened was in, in Africa, what they like to do is they like to have a picture of the people that are coming to speak at their crusades and kind of and those type of things. And for some reason, my picture kept not going through. So they never had my picture. So all of the flyers had the other two gentlemen that were supposed to be there. But God used even that little detail on this particular trip. For some reason, the, the trip was arranged that, that I was to fly out of uh, Atlanta instead of Charlotte. So instead of a, an hour and a half drive to the airport, it's a five and a half hour drive to the airport. But God arranged that on that day that I would stop in, in Dalton, Georgia, 
and visit the folks that at that time had uh, oil flowing out of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And and the the gentleman that was there uh, was very gracious and and he knew, he you know understood where I was going and what I was doing, so he gave me a a, a lot of vials of, of oil to take as gifts wow. to the pastors that I was going there to train. That's beautiful. So it was, it was really special in, in that way. But he was kind of late getting there when I arrived, so I had to wait a few minutes for him. And the ladies that worked there just read my mail. They, they just, you know, you know they, they, without knowing any of the backstory, they knew everything about this trip and they prayed for me for all the things that were happening within this story. And then as they're doing that, a friend of theirs walked into the, to the uh, place where, this was, where I was to meet this gentleman and this friend, they said, oh, she's got to share her testimony. And the testimony was of her grandson who was born with this thing that I had never heard of an, an ailment. A lot of the stuff that we do is pray for physical healing and we see God move in incredible ways. And, and it's been a change wow. in, our, in our journey. But God still heals, huh? Amen. He <laughs> heals miraculously. And, and he'll use little things like this. Yeah. This lady gives the testimony of this child that has this syndrome called flaccid baby syndrome. The, the baby's muscles are perfectly fine. The nerves are perfectly fine. But there's like no connection between the two. So they say the child will never uh, hold his head up, let alone walk or stand or, or any normal things that a, that a child would be able to do, even though their, their body is, is okay, it's just not, it's not connected. But they started anointing this child with this oil from the Bible, and over a period of time, this child now, uh, and I forget how old he is, but they sh she actually showed me a little short video of him. He is now in a wheelchair, rolling himself around, sitting himself up, and he's learning to play worship songs wow. on a guitar at, I don't know how, seven or eight years old, whatever wow. his age is, he's pretty young, maybe younger than that. They used to say a walking miracle. I guess that'd be a rolling miracle, but that's, well, that's they, pretty cool because the walking's coming in Jesus' name. The doctor was telling them that they need to start thinking about getting a handicapped van as the child gets older and, and this, and they just said, no, we rebuke that. We're going to believe that this child will be walking and they're going to continue to anoint him in the oil. And that's a cool story, right? I mean, you got to admit, that's, uh, that's pretty incredible yeah. to, to begin with. So I, I get to Uganda and uh, the thing was that I was supposed to be there with help, but we, what was arranged was we were to do a pastor's conference all day from 10 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the evening. And then at 6 o'clock or 6.30 in the evening, we did a street crusade for seven days. Wow. <laughs> and as it turned out, since I was by myself, it all fell on me. I had to do, which was awesome. God just showed up in, in so many ways. The, the pastor's... Uh, some of them really grabbed a hold of, of, of God in a supernatural way. And when it came time to go to the crusade, they came with me and helped pray for, for the sick wow. and, and see so many different miraculous things happen. But back to that other story, the crazy thing was the very first night of the street crusade, two different ladies show up with their babies with this flaccid baby syndrome that oh, before oh this goodness. trip I had never heard of in my life. And I'm like, I, I would not, I, I have to be honest with you, I would not have had the faith to pray for these two babies that they, to think that they would begin to be healed if I hadn't heard the testimony on the way there. Wow. God will just supernaturally arrange these things in your life so that you have the testimony to stand on. It's so beautiful. So, I, so these two ladies are in front of me with these two babies. So I, I, I of course, had the oil. So I anointed, anoint them with oil. I pray for the babies, and I explain to the babies. I, I share through the interpreter the uh, the story of the testimony of the child that I received on the way there, and I tell them, if your child is not healed here immediately, bring them back every night, and I will continue to pray for them and anoint them every single night. You just push to the front of the crowd, and you make sure you come see me every single night that I'm here so that we can work through this miracle, this healing that we know that God has for your children. The, uh, the next night, the, the one lady shows up with her baby. The other lady, I don't know if that child got healed and she had to walk to another village, didn't get healed. I don't know the answer. We'll find that story out when we get to heaven. But I never saw the second lady again. The other lady came back every single night. By the third night, this little child that couldn't hold her head up was lifting her head up 
by the end, uh, the, by this last night, the, this child was sitting up by herself in the chair. She was not walking or moving her arms or anything, but she was, the muscles and the nerves were connecting to the point that she could hold oh, herself God. up to sit up. And I'm, I'm being quite honest with you. I would, I would have not had the faith. I may have prayed for him and anointed him the first night, and, 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 and that would have been the end if it wasn't for the testimony that I received on the way on that journey. And that is so beautiful. Now, in a, in a future episode, I'm going to talk to you about uh, how you've been a, what you might just consider an ordinary guy doing his day, doing his practical stuff, but your eyes begin to open. And so we're going to get to that in a future episode. But um, I, I want everybody to make sure to stay tuned for part two of that episode. But I also want to hear a little bit of the continuation of how God has used you in healing as well as you've, you've had a number of financial miracles and just God has used you in the business world as well, which is incredible because uh, there's a lot of listeners that uh, maybe they don't know how to bring faith into their day-to-day -day lives. And so I think you're going to have a lot of stories for that. If you could uh, leave everybody with a thought uh, for what's going on in the world right now, the way things are, there's a lot of things happening. A lot of people are in fear. What would you do to give them encouragement right now? The, the encouragement right now, the way I'm, my mind is, is focused is Jesus is king. If we put our faith in a, in a political system or political party or, you know, anything other than Jesus, it, it's too easy to get distracted and start getting bogged down in, in the ways of the world. We need to keep our eyes focused on him. So good. I, 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 you know, I know we need to pray for our government and our leaders, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I just get concerned when, I, when I, I'm seeing Christians that are spending all their time in that area. If we're not crying out for the lost and, and for those that are being oppressed and, and in, in physical need and taking the time to, to get before the Lord with those things, then I think we're missing the mark. We, we've gotten off of, we're going to Him, but we're, we're not going to Him with, with the, the, our priorities in order. I think we need to make sure that we keep our priorities. Jesus first. Come on. <laughs> and, and that's it. You know? That's so good. Uh, thank you for listening today. Just want to encourage you to make sure you subscribe and leave a rating there on the Awaken the Wonder podcast, as well as on the YouTube channel, Facebook, and Instagram at Evangelist Caleb Wampler. Make sure to stay tuned for part two of my conversation with Mark Brown, coming to you on the next episode. Blessings. Thank you for listening to Awaken the Wonder. If you enjoyed today's show and want more ministry like this, please visit kingdomencounters.us, where you can find weekly blogs in my latest book, Hunger. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at the tag Evangelist Caleb Wampler. If the Lord leads you to partner with us in the nations in prayer and giving, visit kingdomencounters.us. I'll see you next time.